Dead Matter was one of my most, and probably your most, anticipated survival game in recent years. It proclaimed having everything from thousands of zombies to a compelling world building elements, NPCs, sophisticated crafting and base building, and more. And I am honestly getting hyped talking about the game that should have been. Long story short, the game's soft launch was wrought with disaster, mismanagement, bad publicity, and lack of planning and preparation. Some expected, myself included, that the team would do what most disgraced developers do and run with the money, but they didn't. For all the wrong they did and all the lies they told, they haven't run. In fact, they have recently come out with a new development vlog that seems pretty impressive. Once again, it all looks way better than reality, I am assuming, just because they are running the game in their own specific environments to make it look as polished as possible. Will you experience what they show you when you boot up the game when it releases in early access? I have no idea. But let's get into the update. Nick opens up by talking about their lack of communication, what they have been up to, and more. He even mentions that this vlog they will discuss the new quote way forward, end quote. And that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth the second he said it, just because we have heard that before. There seems to always be a new way forward with this development team, and I'm just wondering when they will just stick with a path so they can start making real progress and stop rebuilding the game. The clear thing they want us to take away from this vlog is the amount of zombies. It opens with a shot of the zombies. The thumbnail has a picture of the zombies. So let's talk about the zombies. They created their own coding called Pitbull AI, and this is supposed to be a total solution to all things zombies, but apparently it is what controls the flocking capabilities. When enough zombies get into the same area, they will all form small flocks that could then congregate into larger hordes. This segment of the clip that Nick shows has over 2,700 zombies at one time, and apparently the server performed well and could have handled way more. My thing is, when can we actually expect good server optimization because I haven't experienced it. If the server can run thousands of zombies, and that is really a feat and one to be proud of, I should say, when can it run with more than five players? When can we get on the server and have thousands of zombies and there be no crash? What, what does that look like, that time frame? How realistic is that? And I hope they are able to make this successful because I would still love to be part of a world that is crawling with the undead and every choice could be your last. Now the animations all look really polished, the firing of the handgun is smooth and beautiful, the reloading, inspection, aiming down sights, it all looks really good. But that is not surprising to me as that has always been what set them apart as an indie development team, to me personally, is how good their animation team does with the character models. World interaction has been updated as players are now able to cut down trees and harvest berries from bushes. This will be a welcome addition to the game as even though it is a zombie game, it is still a zombie survival game as they mentioned earlier and it needs those elements to be labeled as such. I do really like how the tree just falls into logs all at once. It's not realistic, but it just feels fun to me. It's good playability. World building and storytelling was something they talked about a lot in the early days. Finding a note here, a diary there, maybe a key that unlocks a safe with some valuable information or items. That is still a passion for the team, as they say that multiple NPCs with quest giving capabilities will be added, and that some quests Quests can even be triggered by finding the quest item first like this drone. I really hope that they can deliver on the storytelling portion of the game because that is a big part of setting the right tone and enveloping the player in the world. If we care about the world and if we care about the story, we will keep playing. Nick does go on to talk about the regions of the game, but I won't lie. Right now, I don't care much to talk about them because I care more about the performance of the game and the environments. The environments don't matter if I can't play or if I can play and it's just not fun. So when I am able to get on the game and genuinely enjoy the time I spent on it, then I'll be excited for the environment. What's next? What? Where have I gone before? What are they going to add? Which really sucks for me to say because I can see how important it is for them to accurately reflect their world in Alberta and they are excited for us to experience it as well. And I want to experience it and I want to enjoy the world they are building, but I need reliable performance and stable optimization to do so. I really want this game to succeed. We have been through a lot of ups and downs with the dev team, but for it to mean anything but failure, they have to create a product worth playing. Will this be a No Man's Sky situation? I, I don't know. 
but I see they still care, and I see they are still pushing forward, and I genuinely wish them the best as they continue forward with their development process. The eyes of the survival fans are on you, Dead Matter. Do not disappoint again. If you made it this far and want more Dead Matter news, more survival updates, consider subscribing to catch the latest releases. Happy surviving, Path Out.